to show on the wall, derived from this idea that this entire collection was done remotely. I was looking back, I think, like a lot of people were doing, in this moment of kind of rethinking of models of fashion and how we approach things. When we worked with the artist Anthea Hamilton for the Devines at the Tate Britain, for me it was a very seminal work. Just before the summer I, I was thinking how do we recontextualize fashion in this moment and I thought it was nice to work with her again on the wallpaper. I think while we're in a situation where travel is restricted, I still wanted the viewer to participate. So my idea was that the viewer is, is kind of put into the position that they are forced to be creative, they're forced to interact. There's scissors, there's a paintbrush, a bag that you can put all the equipment into. You get posters. Instead of being micro, we've now gone maxi. Everything is exactly life size. When I was kind of working at how we were going to put this collection together, I like this idea that we would really delve into exploring the art of fashion. This collection glorifies the hand embroidered, the hand woven, the handmade, and makes us think of the past, the present, and the future. How could you make these three things communicate without having disregard for the other? The collection is based on the idea of um, fantasies and reality. It's very confident, it really makes the wearer become something. It takes them to another place. Sometimes it's nice to kind of escape into clothing. I've been doing a lot of historical research on, on how boning can be used within uh, clothing and actually taking it out of its context instead of having it here or when it's here. By using it on the different edges, you can get kind of uh, a structured fluidity somehow where you kind of take a softer fabric using it to force shape or force movement. Knitwear is one of my all-time favorite outputs usually in a collection. This time I liked this idea of knotting the knit in different parts. You could tie it in different ways, but with a very glamorous fabric. It's actually made up of thousands of little sequins and they're all alternating in color. The fabric becomes quite disco in its approach. You know, I think some of my favorite pieces actually derived out of the men's. We worked with Adoya, who does all our beautiful handmade woven leather pieces. This idea of leather craftsmanship that kind of controls silk or becomes more like poetic armor. So in terms of the bags for this collection, a big part of it was really kind of rediscovering our classics and really trying to perfect them more. The puzzle bag that I did when I first joined at Loewe, we've embellished it with loads of sequins. The flamenco is a very kind of purist bag. I wanted to reduce it back to its original, which is, you know, about 30 to 40 years old. It has the historical knot detail on the side. And then on the balloon this season, we have woven the sides of it like a deconstructed basket. We worked with Adoya again to work on the, the rattan bag, which is a, a square structure bag where we have got rattan and leather mixed. We have explored with a couple of new shapes. We have a shell bag. It actually came out of a lot of research I was doing on a ceramicist called George Orr, an American ceramicist from the 19th century, who explored with clay in a very out of period way. It is nearly like taking a slab of flat clay and then you are building in kind of dimples in it to create the volume. 
this is a moment where it is not about being bombastic, it's more about being sensitive and sincere and honest of where we are at. But it's sometimes better to kind of like embrace a moment that is challenging than trying to pretend that it's not. When you bring different parameters, I think creativity can really flourish because it makes you think differently.